This film is made of 65,000 paintings. Not created in some kind of software, but each one painted by hand, making Loving Vincent the first film ever to use this technique. The film comes from the minds of Dorota Kobiela and Hugh Welchman. Dorota, a painter herself, first had the idea to make this film when she was studying Van Gogh's techniques and discovered this story through reading his letters. Originally intended to be a seven minute short film, Dorota and Hugh then turned it into a full feature length film with the help of over a hundred artists. I was really interested to see what the process was going to be because I knew um, that we were all going to be turned into sort of Van Gogh style paintings, but I didn't quite know how you guys were going to go about doing that. What's interesting to note here is that of these artists, they were all classically trained painters rather than traditional animators. This is because the directors were specifically looking to replicate Van Gogh's work rather than to create a new style interpreted from it. Hugh wanted to avoid animators that might have their own unique flair to dilute the film's visions. This, I think, creates an interesting point of discussion when it comes to carrying on the legacy of such a well-established artist. Is it better to use the artwork as a springboard to leap from and dive into your own interpretation? Or is it more faithful to replicate the very same techniques used by the artist? I think they both have their merits, and in the case of Loving Vincent, I think the latter is definitely used to great effect here. Which Vincent painting are you? I am, oh, you're gonna get me here because I'm terrible at pronouncing her name. La Mosme. Mosme, La Mosme. The film features and reimagines a number of recognizable artworks from Van Gogh, such as Cafe Terence at Night, The Night Cafe, and of course, his self-portrait being used as the cover of the film. Each one of these are used to create the vibrant and wonderful locations and characters you see in the film. To bring this all to life, the film uses a variety of techniques. Firstly, they would use actors working on a green screen as a way of motion capture. Then, they would take this footage to give to the artists, who would then hand paint each individual frame for the final product, creating a rich and beautiful style of animation unlike anything seen before. When the film was released, it was received incredibly well, winning Best Animated Feature at the 30th European Film Awards my heart is beating so hard. <laughs> and being nominated for both an Oscar and a Golden Globe. And to this day, there hasn't been another film like it. Stop me when this sounds familiar. You've sat down to watch a film about somebody's life. The movie opens where the main character is old, or already well established, and something big is about to happen. They walk out on stage, or are talking about the life they have led. And then the screen fades out, and we flash back to them at the start of their career. It has been done to death. Speaking of death, how about we see a film dedicated to one character, and have that character already dead before the movie has started? Loving Vincent takes a whodunit approach to the biopic genre, exploring his life and work through the lens of people who he has touched, rather than through his point of view. So, you know, Vincent was definitely a, a, a revolutionary in terms of the way he was seeing the world, and sometimes it takes some time for the world to catch up. Ah, now that's something a bit different. Getting swept up along in the story of Van Gogh through the use of an insert character, our protagonist of the film, Armand Roulan, is tasked with delivering a letter from Van Gogh to his brother, Theo. Armand is fairly unbothered by the whole affair and is reluctant to go at first, only after talking to his father, the postman, does he begin to warm to the idea. What then follows is a kind of detective story, trying to figure out what happened to Van Gogh to lead up to his suicide. The journey takes us to many fantastically realized locations and some equally interesting characters. And this is where I think the film is truly a unique watch. Because Armand is slowly piecing together bits of information, we too are learning more and more but I don't think the engagement necessarily comes solely from this type of detective story. I think a lot of what keeps the audience engaged is the characters and the conversations that tell us how Van Gogh affected them, how they were all fairly enamored with him, save a few outliers, how his passion and drive for art really stuck with them. This is where we really get an insight into how the man worked, something we will never truly know. Each new conversation shows a new side to him, it makes us feel like we ourselves are getting to know him. This is where the film has its own criticism. You want to know so much about his death, but 
What do you know of his life? As much as this movie is an absolute visual masterpiece, I think a lot can be taken from that one quote. The story is interesting and captivating, but I think where it focuses on the reasons for Van Gogh's suicide are maybe overspent. Suicide is a complicated thing, and I am certainly no expert on the subject, but I do think you will drive yourself crazy trying to pin down the exact reasons a person would do such a thing. It can sometimes make processing the whole thing a lot easier when you have something concrete to point to and say, this is why that happened. But a lot of the time, there is no concrete thing. As we learn from all the different characters, everyone has their theory as to what happened, when in actuality, it could have been a combination of all of them, or none at all. All we are left with is a lifetime of work that will live on forever, and ultimately, how we interpret that is only down to us.